Welcome, everybody, to episode nine of Eat, Speak, Compete, the podcast where we talk about everything going on in the esports and gaming space every single week. My name is Yeso, your host as always, and joining me once again, my co host, Luke Shimonahi Brew. How are we doing, my man? Happy Monday. Happy Monday, indeed. We're doing good. Um, it's World's Week, mm-hmm. so I'm super excited. Uh, tons of great esports coming up. And, um, I mean, honestly, it just feels like we were stuck in a, a drought for a long time in the gaming space. And now I just feel like I have too many fun games that I want to play all the time. So uh, I've, I'm ha- I've been having a great week. It's a good problem to have. It's a vast problem. Right. Have, yeah. So a uh, ton going on. Obviously, Luke mentioning Worlds getting started last week. Uh, so we've got a, a bunch of things to cover here. So let's get into it. And we will start with uh, Worlds. We'll talk about play-ins here a little bit. Those finished up. Uh, on Saturday, we had the last couple of best of fives to determine the last couple of teams that would qualify into the group stage here. And we get LNG, the fourth seed uh, from China. They qualified just based on finishing first in their group. And Detonation Focus Me from Japan. And this is the first time that a Japanese team has qualified for the main stage at a world championship and they qualified by going 3-1 in their group stage and then beating Cloud9 in the deciding tiebreaker. So they make it through and then we got Homo Life and C9 that both qualified through winning their best of fives to close out the play-in stage. So we got the last four teams all jumping into Worlds. Yeah, no idea how Cloud9 got there, but I'm uh, <laughs> I'm excited nonetheless. You know, uh, I, I, I'm be honest, I, I didn't wake up and drink my hopium this yeah. morning, so I, I can't say that um, <clears throat> North America is even on my mind at all, but, um, you know, good for everybody else. Yeah, I mean... Japanese stuff is also super cool. Like, I was hyped about that. I hope they yeah. do well. I don't I think mean, they will, but I, I also hope they do well. DFM is, like, is the Japanese team we basically get to see yeah. uh, every single year. Uh, Yudapon, who is their AD carry, has been uh, competing Monster. forever for DFM and, and for Japan. And incredible to finally see them taking that next big step. Obviously, they're going to have a very difficult group to deal with, and we will go very in-depth with that uh, later on in the show. Luke and I have already been... Uh, Picking Talking them. some smack <laughs> today them. in the office, so a lot to cover there. One thing I you do want to talk Gen-G about. Game before we walked in here, I was I'll literally be right before we started. I was watching well, the Gen-G game. Well, 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 see, we'll see, we'll see. <laughs> uh, but one thing I want to talk about from Worlds Plans, um, obviously credit to all the teams that competed. I know Oceania uh, showed up really well. We had Pentanet at uh, the midseason Invitational, and then Peace actually looking really good uh, despite a rough start to Plans. But one of the biggest stories to come out. Uh, was Beyond Gaming's mid laner, Malwan, I believe is how it's pronounced. Uh, Beyond Gaming is the second seed from the PCS, which is the same region that uh, PSG Talon comes from. And they get into the knockout stage four play-ins. They win their first series. And then it comes out that Malwan, their mid laner, has been suspended due to a match-fixing scandal. Uh, Riot put out a statement uh, confirming its ruling. They said the, the team had obtained definitive evidence showing Malwan provided inside information to a friend for the purposes of waging, wagering on today's match. According to Riot, Malwan will be suspended for the remainder of the 2021 World Championship and may be subject to additional penalties following a full investigation. Obviously, Beyond went on to lose to Homo Life 3-0 in their next series, so he was only suspended for a day, essentially. Um, but that was a crazy story to see, especially because his AD carry, Doggo, was incredible. One of the biggest stories from Plans was how good Doggo was, and uh, obviously unfortunate to see how their tournament finishes, especially because they didn't have a mid laner sub, so they didn't have a ready replacement for Malwan going into that series. Yeah, I mean, you say the suspension is only a day, but it's the only day that mattered. Oh, uh, for sure, for <laughs> sure, right? It's like it's like it's like being suspended from the Olympics for the one day that you yeah, had right, to the compete. gold medal match. <laughs> yeah, dude, like absolutely brutal. I mean, get out of here. Like, come and, on. Like, what, did you leak your DMs on Discord where you told a guy to vote on a guy because they were going to pick, at, like... My uh, first thought was of our discussions here. here on the show because we talked uh, at length back in, I think, episode four or five about, che- um, cheaters. about cheaters in, in Valorant and CSGO. And you were like... Get them out of here. Get them out. Get them out. My first thought was... I kind of think I already know what Luke's opinion is going to be here. And I yeah. would say I have a looser opinion when it comes to something like this because yeah. even the, the when I looked at the statement and everything that came out around it, I was just kind of like, 
yes, it's good that they suspended him. Yep. But also, it's not like, you know, it's 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 one thing to be a greedy little little guy, mm-hmm. and, it's, and, it's, <laughs> and it's another thing to like literally like throw the game to win to sure. to like win the side bet. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not like that guy was going in there to throw the game on purpose. Yeah. It's just like a pro player's inside thoughts that's also in the game. You know, it's it's like asking LeBron, sure. like LeBron telling his brother to, you know, it's it, there's there's always going to be a, a, a fine line there. The hard part around specifically stuff like this around match fixing is like even if and and there's going to be people that'll look at it and say, "Well, you know, Beyond went on to win, so like is it really that big of a deal?" And the problem is is it just it invites too much uncertainty where you can't have it, right? You need people, players, uh, TOs, spectators, all need to be confident and secure in the fact that these matches are all above board. Everybody is competing at the best of their ability for the right reasons. And when you introduce any sort of stuff like this, even if it's someone doing this and saying, you should bet on us to win for these reasons, it just introduces too much uh, gray area and too much uh, uncertainty that just makes everybody uncomfortable and, and everybody loses, you know? Yeah, I like I like how, well, you know, I think, you know, Riot does the right thing there in the, say, in the sense of suspend them, move it on, whatever it might be. Mm-hmm. And I think anything outside or like further than that or like a more or a harsher punishment, like would really need to come from more of the organizational side mm-hmm. of like the team itself because the team is the one who has the reputation harm now. Yeah. And that's the defamation in that end, which probably is in that player's contract, yeah. right? Where it's like they can't do things to hurt the brand and things like that, right? So if anything, it's more of on now you know, that Riot's kind of put their foot down. Now the organization probably doesn't want to be associated with that person anyway. Mm-hmm. And I doubt that any other team is going to want to pick up the villain. You yeah. know what I mean? So it's one of those things where it's like almost without having to ban the player, Riot can kind of pseudo ban players in the same way where it's like, you know, because reputation is a lot to these these guys. And it's not even just being one of the best players, right? But it's like you have to be able to be in that limelight and not make people hate your team. So yeah. I would say um, not good looks and mm-hmm. uh, it's probably not going to help his future career. And I'm, I'm really curious to see, you know, I'm not going to uh, assume anything, but one of the things that this, you know, uh, event is going to invite in is, has he done this before? Has he done it in the PCS? You know, I'm not going to uh, assume anything. You but of know, course, I'll give everyone's going to say it. Out. Everyone's going to think about it anyway. Sure, so. and that's what is part of what's going to come then with this further investigation from Riot is going to be, was this the first instance of this or has it happened before? And, you know, I would imagine Beyond will cooperate fully with the investigation. We'll have to see, you know, what ha- what happens, whether it's in, in the following weeks or months. But uh, not not a good situation for Mawan uh, or beyond gaming as, as a whole. So definitely uh, a very difficult way for their world championship run to end. Yeah, literally d- just don't cheat. Mm-hmm. It doesn't work out almost ever. Yeah. Like very poorly. It's not going to do you any good. That's for sure. That's for sure. Uh, tons to talk about uh, for Worlds. We'll hit on a bit more of it later, but let's move on to our next story here. Uh, let's talk about 100 Thieves. And this is sort of, uh, we will talk a little bit more about their their LCS stuff later, but let's talk Apex Legends because mm. Hunter Thieves is back in Apex. They have signed the defending North American ALGS champions, Anmu, Scurry, and Vayne, who were competing for KNG. They won the North American ALGS championships back in June, collecting over $250,000 in prize pool and part of this is 100 Thieves has signed the roster and also takes Kanji's uh, invite slot to the ALGS Pro League first split. So uh, big, big moves for 100 Thieves. We were speculating about it a few weeks ago when they signed Nicewig. Were they going to jump in, you know, to the Apex competitive space? And they have answered that question here uh, in a very big way. Yeah, easy move. Mm -hmm. You know, you're 100 Thieves, you're looking at ALG or looking at Apex as a scene implode. You walk in, you buy some big influencers. Mm-hmm. Like, okay, cool, we got some, we got some big boys now. But then it's like we don't have a competitive team. Oh, look at the defending champions are just mm-hmm. sitting here on a silver platter for yeah. us. Let's not only snag the defending champs, but also take the pro league spot. Like stars align, baby. That's what I'm talking about. Whoever, whoever at over 100 thieves that's that's sailing that ship is uh, is quite the captain, and I approve of this decision. Yeah, I mean, there's <laughs> like. There's a ton of stuff about Hunter Thieves uh, to talk about. We'll talk about uh, a little bit more later in relation to the stuff at Worlds for them. But, I mean, I think Hunter Thieves has really... I think they've been incredible for a couple of years. But I think really over the last 12 months, 
they have really set themselves apart as truly a premier esports organization globally. And I think they have some of the best business savvy of the space. You look at all the different collaborations that they're doing, all the merch that they do, and how they are truly this multimedia juggernaut, along with having great teams in multiple different titles. Nadeshot really has this entire organization running like a well-oiled machine, and they just look ready to take over on every single front. They really uh, seem to be uh, the... What's the word I'm looking for? Uh, front runner. The front runner, but uh, almost like the they're kind of setting the mold mm. of like the modern esports org of like the biggest ones are going to you know even if you aren't winning championships, there are ways to dominate the space and really define and you know set goals and set uh, records and all these kinds of things for esports work. So 100 Thieves is really just looking incredible from so many so many different standpoints. Yeah, you know, I, I definitely agree. I think that a lot of the esports orgs, you know, the, it's the top 20, whatever, um, that's kind of like the race, right? It's like a race to who can separate themselves mm -hmm. from the pack in, like, different ways, right? Because, again, there's... Um, <clears throat> I, I was listening to a podcast the other day, actually, and one of the guys on there was just talking about how the, the rules, the rule book that, mm -hmm. you know, we'll be following in esports 10 years from now is, isn't even written yet, yeah. right? Because there's, there's such an open space for organizations and teams, et cetera, players, everybody, um, to build that mold of what that will look like and, and develop not just what every esports org could look like, but, you know, have esports orgs be able to take over, you know, or go the direction they want to go, right? 100 Thieves wants to bring in all these different, you know, wants to cross it over with, you know, mainstream media and, you know, do all these super cool collabs and focus more on that street wearing merch vibe um, and that that lifestyle concept more than, you know, TSM's about, you know, becoming champions and owning the, the, the best type of, you know, live streaming talent and like those kind of components, they really go after like those specific superstars. And then you got, you know, more of like the Cloud9 and the Team Liquid types who have more like, you know, finite roots in the competitive gaming space and they're just all about like owning tons of different rosters and put producing content around those rosters right same thing with clg and i think that you know they all have their benefits mm -hmm. and it all really just <clears throat> focuses on like what their investors goals are right because all these different organizations are like almost fully funded mm -hmm. by just sponsors and, and investors right so it's like it's all about producing a multimedia conglomerate that checks all of your different investors' boxes. And I think that um, there's a lot of different ways to do that and a lot of different ways to take a, um, an internal structure of a, a professional organization in the esports space. And I think that 100 Thieves is doing it in a, in a very interesting way. And mm -hmm. I guess I'm just kind of, I'm excited to see, you know, where they end up landing. Because right yeah. now, from, from my point of view, it just seems like 100 Thieves is throwing everything at the wall yeah you know what i mean and to be fair almost everything is sticking but and i don't that, know if that's, that's helping crazy. or hurting or what or what exactly yeah. is going on internally on on that end but it's you know it's, it's interesting to see i guess on like what what pieces of the you know all these noodles that are sticking to the wall like what they actually run with and or you know because you can't you can't run the every part of the world right sure. it's like at the end of the day you know different teams will probably end up owning different categories more than others but right now i really i agree i think they're setting the mold and I think it is is important to mention, as you talked about, that there isn't one set way to build your org and like the style of it and what you're going to do. I think that's very important. And I, I love that there are, you know, when you look at those top 10, top 20 biggest esports orgs in the world, there's all those different kinds, right, sprinkled in there as you talk about with the CLGs, the Cloud Nines, et cetera. So I think that is important. The word I was definitely looking for was... Uh, they're setting like a template for mm -hmm. this kind of org and it's that big wide reach into different parts of culture and, and multimedia and 100 Thieves is doing incredible. Uh, do also want to talk about uh, obviously they grabbed that uh, invite slot for the LGS Pro League for Split. Uh, some other teams that will be going because we're getting news on that kind of as the weeks go on and the final preseason qualifiers for North America will actually finish uh, the day of recording so a couple of hours from when we're recording this right now but our boys on Dudes Line Out uh, as Team Intel in uh, Series E. They will be going. They won uh, one week Bench Warmers, which is the squad of all the rejects from some of the big rosters. You got Rambo, uh, you got Madness on there, you got Knocked. They'll be going. Uh, SXG 
which is a roster that includes Golden from the Season 3 Cheez-Its roster. They're yeah. going to be going, and some other names we know, Noble, the former Team Pop-Tarts going, Absolute Monarchy, which has Stomps, who did compete for Team Pop-Tarts in Season 2. So uh, a lot of very interesting teams that have qualified, a lot of names that we know very well here. And I'm very excited for the first split uh, of the ALGS Pro League. I think it's going to be very fun and very interesting to see how things shake out in the competitive scene. Uh, Apex is you know, continuing to, to peak. I think it's in a very incredible place. And this next year, I think, is very much going to define the future of Apex as a competitive title. Yeah, I'm pretty excited for the Pro League. Um, you know, obviously we can we can we've seen the growth of Apex from inside the, yes. the community of just even when we entered it about a year ago, um, and I'm definitely excited to see what the pro league does to the overall mix, right? Because every big esport is defined defined by their pro league, all of them, mm -hmm. right? So it's 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 you know how the viewership does, right? Like how much <laughs> the players enjoy it, like you know what kind of lifestyle the players who compete in have to live in order to compete in there sure. right so like there's a lot of things i think that uh we're going to find out over the, the next month or so and I'm, I'm really excited to see the scene continue to grow and the talent inside the scene get a chance to grow right mm -hmm. we're all about here at, at esports arena with our program series e of you know giving those opportunities to these let's say just quote unquote lesser known players to give them that you know that stepping stool to be able to get noticed to get to that big stage whatever it might be um and the pro league just opens up a whole additional layer to it right so it's it's super cool i'm really excited to see not just um the scene develop but also of course all of our series e players um and talent even right be, be able to continue to grow in the space and you know see who comes out on top yeah i think there's going to be a very significant series e representation uh, in those 40 teams, uh, you know, Noble that we already talked about and, and the, all the other squads that have likely already qualified. Two brains, one controller still has a shot. Our good friends, uh, Mr. Haculo uh, and Zara Tricky still have a shot at qualifying. So there's definitely going to be a lot of fun stuff. Uh, we will certainly be very personally invested in the Pro League because we want to see these players succeed. But I think there's uh, a lot of things that fans can get excited for here in the lead up to the Pro League. So a lot of cool stuff over there. Let's switch gears back to Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl. Uh, we've been watching and playing a lot of it over the last week, and somebody who's been absolutely crushing it the last week is our good friend, Me. not Shimonihi, it's Void. <laughs> it's Void. Let's talk about Void. Uh, won two tournaments last week. Won the Juice Box tournament that had over 700 entrants in it. Also went on to win the Nicktoon Throwdown Invitational. Uh, it's been incredible to watch this game popping off since its release, but especially Void has been very exciting to watch. And the finish to his series in the Juice Box tournament was so crazy. If you guys haven't seen it, not only is the pop-off good, but just the way that that last stock in Game 5 of the Grand Finals reset closed out was incredible to watch. Yeah, I mean, we'll start with the, the Juice Box tournament. Super I, I mean, CLG Void, insane. The dude's a psycho. Like, mm. absolute incredible player. He he obviously found a, a game that, similar to Smash, right, of course, has a lot of the similar mechanics. And he mm -hmm. just dove in game one, or day one, and did not stop the grind. And it really showed in these first couple of tournaments. Because, you know, it, it's not like he's competing against Timmy Two Toes and, and Shauna Three Toes, right? It's it's freaking... Um, Everybody has all of their toes. It's the best of the best players, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, he's yeah. playing against some of the best, the better platform fighting game players or the best platform fighting game players in the world mm -hmm. right he's competed a bunch against a bunch of those and he was still able to come out on top so super cool seeing him play he plays ang from avatar so that's super cool too because mm -hmm. he's like such a crowd favorite character um but yeah the juice box finals was crazy because he was down two to one stock and was barely able to bring it back and the pop-up was hype but the nickelodeon uh, the official nickelodeon stream mm -hmm. finals was almost crazier he was down oh two in grands and he reverse swept. And it was just like, oh, man. He was so calm and cool, collected, too. He, like, dropped that second game. He's just... <laughs> he's just vibing, you know? He's, he's like, in his own. He, he's like that comic of the dog in the house on fire. And he's like, this is fine. No, literally. <laughs> and then proceeded to and turn it around. And then proceeded for it to be fine. Yeah. Like, it, it was absolutely crazy. I was so hyped to see him be able to, uh, to take those. So, really huge congratulations. Shout out to Void. And the game is mad fun. And well, and I can imagine that all the people over uh, at Nickelodeon and all the developers involved with the game have got to be ecstatic that somebody with 
uh, Void's you know, name and his notoriety in the space, coming to their game, loving it off the bat, and then playing it like crazy and competing in tournaments. I mean, they couldn't have asked for better advertisement for this new game than one of the best and most well-known and most beloved you know, players out there from the Smash scene coming to their game and loving it himself. So. Try the whole scene. Yeah. The whole scene was like, wait, we got to do something that's not Smash. Let's go! Here we go! <laughs> Everyone was like, Smash is yeah. trash. Get it out of here. Uh, it's a love-hate. I Yes, yes, for sure. Do uh, also want to talk about, uh, you sent it to me today. I actually hadn't seen this until oh, yeah, Luke baby. Uh, dropped it in my DMs in Slack. Is the special edition Nick All-Star Xboxes. The SpongeBob and the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles ones. Uh... What are your thoughts Cracked. on those things? I think the SpongeBob one is awesome. Well, I, I think oh, it's so cool. First off, I love the design of the new <laughs> Xbox Series X. Mm -hmm. I think it's like super, super cool, right? Mm -hmm. Just a solid rectangle, just a which big old it, fridge. But if you think about all the other Xboxes, like way harder to design and wrap. But that so easy to design. Like that wrap is it's, it's free. They can do this for so many IPs. Yeah, I'm super excited to get a custom Xbox and these and the SpongeBob and Nickelodeon or the um, Ninja Turtle ones yeah. are super dope. Would I buy it? No, but like, <laughs> uh, but still, it's just like if I was going to buy a new Xbox and I could choose between that and a normal one, yeah. I would almost buy that every time because it's dope. I will say those are cool. The one complaint I have is, have you seen the special edition one they're releasing for Halo Infinite? Hell yeah! Of did you see it? Yeah, of course. What did you think of it? Um, I thought it was super simple. I was really bummed. Yeah. Because I felt like because it's supposed to celebrate the you know a big anniversary for for Halo. Obviously, you know, kind of a new generation for Halo coming out with Infinite. And I looked at it and I was like, this looks so boring. And I'm like, why couldn't you just give me like a give me a black Xbox One X with uh, uh, like a golden silhouette of Chief mm. on it. Mm. Wouldn't that be mm. just, I, I'm like, I'm mm, sitting over here it. feeling like I could do easily a custom wrap for that Xbox and make it way cooler than the special edition you're already making. I'm like, that is so just printing money. Everybody would want did a I special the, edition if they just had like a cool golden silhouette of Chief on there would look sick. Dude, I have the Master Chief uh, custom Xbox 360 way better yes it's super sick like yeah. it's got all these like custom components it looks like armor mm -hmm. it looks like real spartan armor mm -hmm. you know so whatever nice try they're griefing me at least they got at least we got spongebob <laughs> with the spongebob one is at least cool. we got spongebob that's the, dude. that's the one that's the one i'm if i'm getting one i want the Sp spongebob one we talked about uh nick all stars uh let's switch to the counterpart though talk about smash we finally got the announcement the last character coming to smash ultimate yes. is sora from Kingdom Hearts, you you know, I'll I'll, I'll start this off because I think Luke is going to be very opinionated on this. As a not a big Smash player, but a huge fan of Kingdom Hearts, it right. was incredible. I, I watched the announcement trailer and I was like, I was getting emotional. Kingdom Hearts, such a big, uh, uh, big part of me, like growing up. It was one of the uh, first franchises that I like truly fell in love with and seeing Sora and Smash was incredible. I think they did a fantastic job uh, bringing him into the game and it looks like from what we've seen so far that they've really captured the feel of how he was to play in the Kingdom Hearts titles. I think the costumes are incredible so I'm super excited about it. What are your thoughts on it? Because I know it was a controversial pick. Um, well, I think it's pretty cool in general. I think mm -hmm. that it's it's... It's awesome that they worked so hard to get a really unique IP that a lot of people wanted into the game. And to be clear, Sora was the most requested character for the game. They did a poll, I think it was at the tail end of Smash, the Smash 4 era, and they did a poll on like what characters would you want in Smash, and Sora was by far the most requested that they said. Which makes sense. I yes. mean, you know, obviously there's, there's a lot of good characters that they could put in there, but I mean, yes. it makes sense, right? It's a sortie. You know, it's a, it's a, it's, which is Smash 101, right? It's got, yes. it's got a sword. He's got magic that he can shoot, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm sure his specials are really cool. Um, and of course, it's connected to just an entire world of IP that we haven't really scratched too much. Sure. So I'd say, it's it's exactly what they should have done. Mm -hmm. I have, I don't really have any complaints. I'm excited to play them. I'm, I'm also a big old school Kingdom Hearts guy. Um, I wouldn't say like, I think there's way bigger fans than me. Mm -hmm. I think Kingdom Hearts 1 is an incredible game. Everything after that, I think, is fine, mm -hmm. I guess. Like, you can like it if you want. But sure. 
You can't convince me that the story makes any sense because it's trash. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm a diehard Kingdom Hearts fan. And, and you I agree. agree. <laughs> exactly that. Exactly. Because if you don't agree, you're lying because you don't even know what you're talking about. Because you can't understand it. It's I mean, it, the fact that to right. understand the Kingdom Hearts story, you literally have to watch like an hour long explainer that explains how like all the different games tie together and the timelines and like, wait, this character is also mm. that character, but like, that this is like a clone and, and like, is trust me, somebody, like it is a, nobody's yeah, nobody's. the story is a convoluted mess, but, but the gameplay fun. is crazy game fun. Play. You fall in love with a lot of the characters, but yes, like Kingdom Hearts what is the, insane. What was the mobile one that was, was cards? Oh, you're talking about, uh, Chain of, Chain of Memories, yeah. Yeah, see, I've, I've, always, I've always been a card guy. So when that game came out, I was like, this game is dope! Even though it's like the worst one. Super fun for I me. remember playing Chain of Memories back when it came out on the Game Boy Advance. And it, yeah, was, it was very cool. Yeah. I think, I th I think that game is, that game's probably, other than Kingdom Hearts 1, that's my favorite game in the series just because okay. of my nostalgia and, and love for cards themselves. But overall, yeah. I think Sora and Smash is super cool. I'm excited to play them uh, for a little bit and then go back to All-Stars. Yeah. I'm, uh, and you know, go back to brawl. You know, I think it was really cool. One of one of my favorite parts about the whole thing uh, in the response because I ended up the night, you know, the night after we, you know, we saw the announcement in the morning, and that night I went home and I watched a lot of reactions to it. Uh, and very specifically, I watched uh, Hbox's reaction to the announcement. And the biggest thing for him, and I don't know that he necessarily was like. I mean, I think he thought Sora was cool and is like excited about it. Knows a lot of people love it, but he didn't really. He wasn't as like, oh my god, I'm so excited. Sora was in Smash. I think it was his emotions, because this is Sa Sakurai stepping away from Smash, right? The you know ending his saga uh, with the game. Obviously, this has been his baby, his masterpiece for so long, and I thought it was really incredible to watch how emotional he was and how. He really felt like this was a, a, a fantastic send-off mm. for Sakurai to to say goodbye to Smash. And he talked about it. He was like, I hope he takes the longest vacation and, and enjoys his time because he's really put in uh, so much work and so much time and so much love into this series that has really touched millions upon millions of people all across the world. I thought it was really cool. And I think, you know, I, I'm, I'm happy for him. I, even as somebody who isn't the biggest of Smash fans, I think what he's done is incredible and is going to is so difficult for anybody to come close to what he's done with smash over these years oh i mean of course you know we got our our lord and savior soccer yes who, you know, <laughs> who, who has brought us the, the the title known as smash and all but you know it's super cool for him obviously i think that that vacation is called retirement yeah um, and i hope that obviously it treats him it treats him well and i'm, I'm sure that um, his predecessors will take his legacy and, and keep running with it and, and keep the genre alive for, for decades and whatnot to come. But yeah, absolutely incredible to see him. And then of course, you know, this whole community who's been, you know, playing these games for decades, you know, it's super cool for them and obviously us to see, you know, the, the end of the journey. It's like when One Piece ends. Yeah. It'll be that. Well, for me, I'll just be sitting there staring at the sky crying. Did you see uh, Oda <laughs> did like a, a salute in the latest chapter of uh, One Piece, mm -mm. of the manga. Yeah, he did a little uh, piece at the end of it where he drew up a bunch of the characters from One Piece uh, in like the costumes of Smash mm -hmm. characters as like a, oh, cool. like a tribute I didn't see to that. Sakurai. I gotta go see that. You should That's definitely awesome. look it up. It's, it's, it's very, very cool. And I, you know, I think it's, it's an incredible comparison when you look at Oda and what he's done with One Piece and Sakurai with Smash. I think there's a ton of parallels between the two and you know, obviously love to see the, the respect and the acknowledgement from someone who's incredible uh, and has had built you know, something similar to yeah. that kind of cultural impact. So love very it. awesome. That is very cool. So, congratulations, Sakurai. Uh, enjoy your retirement, and uh, I'm going to be spamming Sora starting on the 18th. So, point For exactly one hour before I switch to Nickelodeon. <laughs> uh, let's circle back to 100 Thieves uh, a little bit and talk about a very interesting collaboration. We were kind of touching on that and how the big moves that they've been making. 100 Thieves did a collab with Lil Nas X on a hype video ahead of their World's 2021 group stage start. A uh, little hype slash music video with a couple of uh, the songs from uh, Lil Nas X's new album, Montero, coming out. And man, 100 Thieves just continues 
to do these crazy collabs. I know they were teasing it over the last week with like Valkyrie and Courage putting out some pictures on Twitter of them with Lil Nas X and he's wearing the 100 Thieves yeah. Worlds jersey. And that was just, that was so cool to see. I love how into 100 Thieves, 100 Thieves is. Right? Know, Nobody's know, a bigger fan than like Nade Shot, weird, Courage, and Red. But yeah. like watching Nade Shot get excited when 100 Thieves goes to Worlds. Yeah. Watching Nade Shot like give the whole office the day off because mm -hmm. Nade Shot, because they got into Worlds, right? Yeah. Watching them, you know, do like promotional content and all that kind of stuff of them like viewing parties. It's so cool. I love, we're very similar here, mm -hmm. right? We, we love getting super into our own content, rooting mm -hmm. for our players and that kind of stuff. You see us on Twitter all the time, just even just casually talking with them and stuff because, you know, it's it's cool to, to love what you do. Mm -hmm. And it's, I think with 100 Thieves, they do that really well. Um, I mean, you take like uh, Jack or uh, Courage, you take Courage, for example. Sorry, we go way back, so I call him Jack. <laughs> um, sarcasm. Uh, but uh, Courage, it was like, you know, he was super into that whole like Ariana Grande stuff. And mm -hmm. then, then they teamed up with Ariana Grande. They did that whole like goofy music video thing that they did together. And then mm -hmm. next up you see, then you see Ariana Grande and Fortnite all of a sudden. And then, you know, it keeps kind of tumbling down. So I think that they just have their, they have their web everywhere. And they're just And their finger to, on the pulse big yeah, time too. And they're able to just really, cap I mean, look at Little Nas X's X is literally just a walking impression. Like everything he does just implodes on the internet. Everybody mm -hmm. wants to argue about it online. It's great media for them. It's a great connection to, again, the rest of the, the pop culture universe, which is exactly where 100 Thieves wants to be. Um, so it's, you know, it's great partnerships. It's really cool seeing them continue to just make awesome content yeah. for, their, uh, for their teams and their players and, and focus it all in that kind of lifestyle setting. So I'm a big fan. You know, I, I'm actually not a big 100 Thieves fan, mm -hmm. but I think I'm a, I am really love their business model and all that kind of stuff. I'm just too old school to be a 100 Thieves fan. Yeah, it's funny. <laughs> I like. I thought 100 Thieves was cool from the start, uh, but I was obviously like when they came in, because they started in the LCS, uh, getting that franchise slot, and I was like, hey, they're cool from the front. You know, they had Aphromoo at the start, who's one of my oh, favorite yeah. players of all time. So, but I was, I've always been a CLG fan, but the one thing is like, because CLG has been so trash for the last few years, and I've gotten really frustrated. Yeah, rest in peace, CLG League of Legends. Uh, they're st still around, but they're like wa the walking dead at this point. But because they've been so bad, I've been kind of like, ah, oh, I may find a new team, start rooting for another team. And while like CLG will always hold a very special place in my heart, the jerseys aren't going anywhere. I will still always like root for them to do well. 100 Thieves was the team that I kind of jumped to at the start of this year because when I saw the roster that they had signed, uh, who he is also one of my favorite players of all time, and he's really grown into an incredible uh, support player. But I just looked at this whole roster, and I was like, that's a very exciting roster. I think they could do a lot of cool things. Uh, and I just started following them for that reason, and then I've continued to fall in love with this team and see all the different crazy stuff that they do, and they continue to uh, give me more reasons to, to want to root for this organization. So I think you talk about, you know, Nade shot putting uh, everything into it and how that really shows it's that you know you really feel the passion that they have for everything that they get to do it really shows in all of their content so uh, it's awesome and they you know we got the the little you know Avali May and Captain Flowers and Raz version of Industry Baby that we talked about last week and then we got the official one with Hundred Thieves and Lil Nas X this week so you know it, 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 the music videos coming from the LCS pretty nice definitely pretty nice. Congratulations to 100 Thieves. Keep doing crazy stuff. Yeah. Um, and maybe one day I'll be your fan. Yeah, maybe. Dude, I think that, honestly, if I, was, if I was like a new esports fan entering almost any esport, mm -hmm. it's, I bet it'd be hard to not pick 100 Thieves as my favorite sure. team. Like, I, couldn't, I could not imagine, like, the newcomers coming into the space and, like, choosing to pick a different team in most of the esports that I follow. Like, yeah. Or in most of the esports in general. Like, they just own, like you said, such a cool storyline team mm -hmm. in so many games. Yep. It's not just the League of Legends roster, right? It's yep. their now it's their Apex roster, right? Mm -hmm. Now it's their um, Valorant. Thank you. Yeah, their Valorant. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, the Valorant roster is the same way. The Valorant roster is insane. Yeah, they're great. Super cool. Good job. A lot of reasons to love Hunter Thieves. Yeah. Uh, and their merch. Let's talk a little bit of controversy. We won't go super deep on this topic, but we at least wanted to touch on it because it's some of the mm -hmm. the biggest news to come out of the last week, and it is the Twitch leaks. Um, you know, if you haven't seen it already, have you been living under a rock? A rock. It's been it's, all over the place. I can't get it. Um, we, were, we were talking about it. I can't get it off my timeline. Yeah, I'm so right? disinterested. In I it. asked, I, I, I stepped into Luke's office today and I'm like, do you want to talk about the Twitch leaks? And we kind of had a little short discussion. He's like, I guess we can kind of say what we just said. And he was like, I don't want to go crazy into it. I'm like, I don't really either. Yeah. But, uh, 
long story short, there was a huge, huge data leak from Twitch uh, revealed a ton of different numbers, and one of the biggest things to obviously come out of it was uh, earnings for some of the biggest streamers in the space. Uh, and uh, the funniest thing that I found was so many people surprised and blown away by these numbers, and I'm just sitting over here like, oh my god, the biggest streamers in t on Twitch are making a, a shit ton of money? I never would have guessed. Like, XQC is rich? What? No, that's such a surprise. Like, did you I see think... Lugwig's girl on Twitter? Oh, cutie. Yeah, she goes. She goes. Hold on a second. <laughs> I just found out my boyfriend's rich when I'm still paying for things. Yeah, why am I paying for dinner? I did see that. That was great. Because it's literally like it's it's that exact like policy, right? She's sure. like she's on Twitter like, no way, my boyfriend's rich. Yeah. Question mark. Question mark. Question mark. Yeah. <laughs> like, of course, she, like you literally sit there and watch these guys. Who stream their whole lives all day? Yeah. People just pour money on them. Of course they're rich. That's their whole like. You can yeah. see how much money they make, bro. Like, yeah. I mean, like like I said, we weren't gonna go into super deep on it. My only thoughts were just that. Um, of course they make this much money. None of them are really that surprising. Mm -hmm. uh, the funniest thing I saw, other than the um, other than the cutie thing, was. Uh, the Dr. Disrespect's name was just user1492, whatever it is, because his account's <laughs> deleted. So he's yeah. on the list, actually. Yeah. But it's, like, hidden under a different name, which I thought was cool. Um, but, yeah, none of, I mean, who, surprise. Yeah. It's, I don't know. As soon as it came out, like, I follow it. I, you know, I was following the story from, like, the, because I'm a big fan of Hasanabi. So I was, like, following it from from that sense and, like, the diff, the deeper dive on on that side that we're not going to get into because we're not going to talk you know this is not a political podcast but it was just the more i heard about it i was like the more i didn't care yeah pokemon about was the like, story pokemon was like well at least you guys can stop um at least i don't have to explain to you guys how much money i make now like you guys see it like she like capped her donations a while ago so yeah. like, people couldn't donate too much so her number was a lot lower than people yeah. like thought it was um and so she like read the statement. She was like, "Yeah, I turned it off because I don't want you guys to see these kind of numbers and think this. It's like yeah. I make all my money from, you know, my sponsors mm -hmm. and my at this and that and this and that. Like I have all these other revenues. Like, yeah. <laughs> like at least you can see it now. You know what I mean? At least I don't have to like explain it to you guys anymore. It's all public information. So yeah, I guess I just didn't find anything that was all that interesting from you the know. story. So." Uh, let's get into our final couple of things. We'll round back now to the World Championship. Uh, before we get to oh, yeah, our picks for quick. group stages, let's talk uh, some numbers. Worlds 2020 has already hit a peak viewership of 1.3 million viewers. Uh, and this was just through the first four days of the event during play-ins. Uh, it peaked during the Red Canids versus uh, Hanwha Life Esports uh, match uh, during the group stage of <laughs> play-ins, uh, but five different games eclipsed that one million viewer mark, which is crazy. And you know, part of this is this is helped out by the fact that you still get some big teams in the play-in stage with Cloud9 being there, LNG and Hanwha Life, yep. the four seeds from their regions Hanwha being in there. But crazy to think that in the I don't know least relevant is not necessarily what I want to say, but like the I guess the least hype part of the tournament getting that kind of viewership, I think sets a very good precedent for what we can expect through the rest of what promises to be an incredible event. It's going to be nasty. The viewership is going to be insane. Yeah. We're breaking records this year for sure. I think it's going to be nuts. People are dying for these lands. There's been a ton of crazy buildup for it. Uh, you know, they'll have a little bit of competition when the CSGO major starts and with LCQ going on, but considering they've started off like that, people are hungry for League Esports, and I think that's a, a very good way to start the tournament. I do not disagree. Let's get into the real nitty-gritty here, though. Oh, yeah. Last thing we're going to talk about on the show is our picks for the group stage. We were telling you guys uh, uh, in our previous shows that we were going to do pick-ems. Uh, we're going to have a little competition between Luke and I, so if you guys want to send us your picks, uh, do so. Please shoot us uh, on Twitter. At Castrieso, at Shimoni, uh, we want to hear what your guys' picks are, but we're going to look at ours on the show today. Uh, we've already been talking smack in the office all morning about our picks. Let's start with uh, Luke's here. We'll pull Luke's up on the screen. I'll uh, read them out for everybody at home if you are listening to the audio-only version of the podcast. This is fast. That's fine, by but the way. you can, if you want, 
view our picks on YouTube. So just search Eat, Speak, Compete on YouTube. You can check it out. But and I know it's too late for you guys to take my answers <laughs> and use them to get you guys rewards. In the game. <laughs> yes. Um, but just so you guys know, if you're putting any side bets, this is what I would use. Yeah. This is legal advice. You yes. can take this straight to the bank. Yeah. Riot is not going to ban Luke, <laughs> so he's not competing. He, he's they fine. my account. So, <laughs> so we'll start with we'll start with Luke's picks here. Group A. Uh, we'll start with Group A. This is likely the easiest group to pick. The only question is which of the two teams that aren't going to get out of the group, where do they finish? But he took Damwon in first, Funplex Phoenix in second, Rogue in third, Cloud9 in fourth. Okay, Anything you this, really want to say about this group? Group of death. You see it. I see it. One thing I want to say. I feel like nobody can agree on group. Uh, like, I feel like I see group, group of death right. and group of life applied to the same group sometimes. And oh. it's because people can't, like, agree on, like, what the definitions of these the terms group are. group of death is the group that you are guaranteed to lose no matter what you do. Yes. Which, and unless you're on For, like, if you're Cloud9 in a row, this so is your group So of Cloud9 death. literally needed to get not get seated into this bracket. There was the only way they could get out of groups is if they made it out of this group. And Wait, the only other a, group they could have gone into was group c yes but the problem was because hanwha life made it they couldn't go to group c so they got stuck in group a so but honestly i don't really think it would have mattered uh there's only one north american team that even has a chance so what's it's not cloud nine so see you later <laughs> a good try hey we'll see you guys next year Same what, thing with so rogue. so w do you do you think it's that definitive between rogue over cloud nine or do you think it's close i don't think it's that close really yeah okay i, I, I the only reason i don't think it's that close is because i really do think that like I don't think Cloud9 is going to win a single game. And, like, I think that the caliber... Wow. I think the caliber of, of this, these 12 teams... Yes. I think Cloud9 is the worst team. Okay. He thinks Cloud9 is worse than Detonation Focus Me. That's interesting. Hey, they put on a little bit of a show. I mean, hey, they beat them in a best one. They went one and one against each other in play -in. So, very interesting. Okay, we jump to Group B. Pretty set on what Luke said for Group A. For his Group B picks, he goes... EDG first, T1 second, 100 Thieves third, DFM fourth. Again, DFM, incredible job just getting here. Yeah. I don't, think, off to them. I don't think they can make it any further. I mean, okay. I definitely don't think that they're going to be able to take out um, EG or, or T1. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I think the 100, I don't even think they'll be able to beat 100 Thieves, if we're being honest. I think they're the second worst team here. So I think that, uh, I think that. Uh, DFM, right? Yeah, so DFM. yeah, I think DFM mm -hmm. is the second worst team just based off of the, the planes and whatnot. Um, 100 Thieves, I was a little bit on the fence. Again, I, like I said earlier, I think 100 Thieves has the best chance of any North American team. Mm -hmm. I don't think they can beat EG. I do think, when I was, I was, I, I really did think about the T1 100 Thieves mm -hmm. piece, but then I, my, I mean, I think my it's, gut it's just, credit to 100 Thieves that that's a discussion, right? And that's partially because of. This is not the same T1 that we've seen in years past, but... It's just faker. <laughs> so, so really... You're not wrong. Really, T1 took second in this group strictly because of faker, sure. and then because of that, 100 Thieves obviously had to take third. So I think EG is the easy first tier. I would be very surprised if EG didn't come out on top of this group. Um, but hey, we'll see. We'll see. Let's I, go. I do hope 100 Thieves makes it out. Yes. Uh, in my opinion, Luke's spiciest group here is Group C, and I guess... Based on what you would say, group of death, would you say this is the group of life? Because it feels like kind of anybody can make it out of this group. So this is definitely a group of life, okay. for sure. Because I think that all four of these teams um, are kind of close to each other. Okay. Like, I don't think any of these teams have, like, such a ridiculous advantage on anybody else. Mm -hmm. um, so Luke went with Hanwha Life first, RNG second, Fnatic third, PSG Talon fourth. And we do have to mention, if you guys missed the news... Uh, Fnatic star 80 carry upset is not currently competing with the team. Uh, he had a family emergency and had to travel back home to Germany. Uh, so obviously wish him the best and hope everything's okay. Good on Fnatic for, uh, you know, letting him, him head home. But uh, Fnatic losing their biggest carry on the team uh, certainly hurts them. Yeah, I could see Fnatic dropping, getting fourth and set in this group. Mm -hmm. I could say my third and fourth could be swapped, but... Um... Han was my like my dark horse pick. Like I think that they're I think I literally think they're gonna like annihilate. Okay. Like I'm like convinced. I'm like, excited after, to go after, into like, my watch, opinions on these. I feel like watching them play, picks. like and like yeah. seeing like the character character or their um, the champion select, all that kind of jazz. Like I really do just feel like they're kinda like my dark horse. Like mm -hmm. outside of Mad Lion, mm -hmm. um, I think they could win the whole thing. 
Okay, so, that's interesting. Uh, Mad Lion is my my pick to 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 eat it up this year. Like Ooh, I want okay. Mad, I want uh, that's Group D. So we'll go jump to Group D next, but. Mad Lions is my pick to win all worlds. So. Okay, so he's feeling good about Hall 1, Group C. We go to Group D. Luke picked Mad Lions first, Gen G second, LNG third, and good old Team Liquid rounding out in fourth place in Group D. So what are your thoughts on Group D? Shout out to North America. Uh, moving on. Um, Rest in peace. <laughs> we, did, we, did, hey, we did it. We're here, boys. Yes. Congratulations, Team Liquid, as always. Um, LNG is going to get smoked. Okay, I'm just... Really? I'm, okay. I'm... I'm, I'm this is the only group where I didn't put uh, LPL in top two. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that the reason of that is Mad Lion's too good. Like, they're going to eat it up and they're taking the slot. And I think that Gen G will absolutely beat um, LNG. And I'm pretty sure that that's happening right now if it hasn't ended already. So we'll know shortly if I'm <laughs> right or not. Uh, but I think that if Gen G wins that game, I'm pretty sure I have Group D right. Okay. He just, they just need to win that single game. And when I left, they were winning the game. Okay. So um, I'm pretty confident. Um, I'm pretty confident in Group D, honestly, probably the most. Mm -hmm. Like, I think Group D probably, as long as Genji wins that game, I doubt uh, Group D is going to change at all. So, Luke picking L LCK and LPL exclusively for Groups A through C, and then the only change is in Group D. He has the LEC representative Mad Lions getting out and the LP LPL representative LNG not getting out. So those are his picks. We'll pull up mine here. My group A, fairly similar. Uh, interestingly enough, I took Fun Plus Phoenix as my crystal ball pick, which was, you know, of any of the teams, who do you think it w wins it? And I, I took FPX. Uh, and you might be like, well, if you pick him to win the whole tournament, why don't you have him in first? And I actually think uh, FPX is actually just susceptible and best of ones. Uh, and if you guys watch the first day of groups, spoiler alert, Fun plus Phoenix did lose their first best of one to damn one. They actually got smoked. So I'm feeling good about this group pick so far, but I did have Cloud9 ahead of Rogue. I mean, I feel like both of those teams are fairly interchangeable in my opinion. Yeah, flip the coin, it's fine. So so <laughs> I think group group A is whatever. Um, but group B, I took a little bit of the hopium. So I had damn one, fun plus Phoenix, Cloud9, Rogue, Group A. Group B, I had EDG, Hunter Thieves. T1 DFM. And this is me leaning on one. I think that Hunter Thieves is bit playing their best League of Legends or was at the end of summer. And specifically, I think Closer was incredible. His Lee Sin was disgusting. Still very much in the meta right now. I'm curious to see if he's picked up some of the AD Assassin junglers. We've seen Talon, Zed, Kiana. I think that's going to be key if he's added those to his champion pool. But I'm looking at Hunter Thieves, and I just think T1 is good. And it wouldn't surprise me if they got out of this group, but I'm like, it's Faker and like a bunch of young kids. And so I'm hoping that this is finally North America's chance to really make uh, a big splash in groups since we saw Cloud9 getting the semis in, I think it was 2017. So it's been a long time, but I think we can see some magic here. Um, but I'm not super confident. If I was, I'd say it's like a 55-45 for me, 100 of these over T1. So I think it's close. Yeah, I can't tell if Group B or Group C had more hopium in it this morning. So, um, <laughs> absolute, so absolute delusion. I'm definitely taking some hopium in Group C. So let's go to Group C. I had RNG first. PSG Town second, Fnatic third, Hama Life fourth. And I will say, after what I saw this morning, obviously it depends on if Upset is able to come back quickly to the event and maybe compete in the second week of groups. So I would say I probably, in hindsight, should have had Fnatic fourth because they got dumpstered by Hanwha today. But I'm leaning heavily PSG on PSG. over Hanwha, bro? Come Look, on, girl! I was not impressed by Hanwha and what I saw from them in plans. Dude, I did board, not bro. think that they were very good, great, you know. Sure, they beat up on, on a bunch of minor region teams, Slapping. but I'm like, it's Chovy and four words. And like, granted, Deft is on that team, but this is not like, yeah. this is not like 2016 Deft. You know that. So, <laughs> so I was just, I'm just not that yeah. high. And I think when you look at what PSG did with a substitute at MSI, they crushed COD9, took a game off of Dam one took two games off of RNG in the tournament. I think PSG is not a dark horse to win the tournament, but I think they are very underrated. And I think it is a group of life. So like any result from this group, 
would not surprise me other than Hanwha finishing first. I think that's the, uh, or PSG. Like, I think one of them finishes first. I would be like, what? Yeah, we'll get ready to say what. Yeah, so we'll see how that goes. But I, I think that's a very fun group me too. to watch. I think it's a very fun group to watch. So I'm excited about that. And Group D, though. Group D, finishing it off, I've got Mad Lions, LNG, Gen G, TL. So we both agree that TL is going to get dumpstered in this yeah. group. I think. I mean, we're pretty much on the same page across the board. Like, uh, yeah. I think Group C, where we're, Group C is the only place we really actually disagree. The other ones are just like that's a definitely flip the bigger here there. Yes. Um, but like for the most part, LNG could absolutely make it out of this group. I don't disagree I do, with you. I mean, it could happen. The but thing I just for feel me, like Gen G is going to win it. Like, the thing for me them, about so. LNG is like I think Tarzan is like top three jungler in the world. I think Tarzan is, is incredible, and I think their top laner Ale is actually really sick, mm. and I think he kind of warps the top lane meta in this group. So I think there's going to be a lot of wrinkles on the top side for LNG. And I think they, you know, granted, I think you have to take LNG's results with a grain of salt, especially if I'm going to do that with Hanwha because they played the same crop of teams. Right. I was, but I was impressed with how kind of dominant LNG looked in pretty much every game. So we'll see. I'm buying high on LPL just being strong across the board this year. Obviously, I have all four of their teams getting out. Um, I don't know. I think, and for me, it's just like Gen G did not look good in summer. Yeah. Gen G was not very good in summer. Like, I think new, if they play, day. for sure. And if they play at peak level, like, they could top this group. Yeah. I just well, I don't, don't think they will. Lions, I don't think bro. they will. I think Mad Lions is incredible. Mad Lions about to eat so much booty. Woo! It's going to be fun. I'm super excited. Uh, we've been watching some of the games from the first day groups today. It's been incredible. I think this group stage is going to be unreal. Yeah. And I think the, the my favorite part is, like, while Group C seems to be the most wide open, I still feel like there's very interesting storylines in Groups B and D as well. Like, I think... Anybody of EDG, 100 Thieves, can T get, T1 can get out in any combination. Group D, I mean, even though, like, you and I are buying very low on Team Liquid, I think Group D is also kind of open. Because we, I don't know what Gen G is showing up at this yeah, tournament. Yeah. It's open for everybody uh, but Liquid. Yeah. Yes. So, <laughs> like, I, I think Group Sage is going to be very fun. Yep, and fun I'm super excited. I may be watching it every day. Uh, any final thoughts here uh, on the tournament before we wrap with our games we've been playing? No, I'm excited. Let's run it up. It's going to be a good one. Uh, what have you been playing this week? Oh, man. Like I said, I've been playing a lot this week. Uh, New World. Still grinding New World. Yep. Um, about like half, like what am I, 30, 33, 34, something like that. So just did the second expedition um, last night. That was pretty good. So, you know, I'm excited to get to end, end game. Mm -hmm. You know, the leveling process I think is pretty quick, but it's really repetitive. So mm -hmm. that's a little brutal. But what are you going to do? It's an MMO, right? Yeah. Um, but overall, I do think the game's been pretty fun. Um, I've been playing a lot of Nickelodeon All-Stars Brawl. Yep. That's an absolute blast. Uh, the online is so much fun to play, both with your friends and just against randoms. Mm -hmm. So it feels so much better than games like Smash. Honestly, any fighting game I've ever played, including things like, you know, Dragon Ball Fighters, Tekken, like, it beats sure. all of them. It's just absolute domination. It's incredible. Um, and then Metroid Dread is kind of like have my you played it yet? Dark Horse. I have not played it yet. I've had it on my desk for like a, almost a whole week now. We did a really cool activation in all of our Walmarts, mm -hmm. um, all the esports you know, Walmart locations this week, uh, this weekend, uh, actually all last week, where you got to go in, take pictures with a full cutout of Samus and, um, you know, try out the game and all that kind of stuff. So that was super cool. So I'll be streaming it probably over the next day or two. Mm -hmm. So make sure you guys head over to twitch.tv forward slash esports arena yeah. and watch Lukey Brew here. Uh, play some Metroid Dread because I'm very, very excited to play that game. It's got incredible reviews. Yes. I've never played a Metroid game, and okay. I've mained Samus and Smash since 64. So it feels like it's time. That's the biggest thing for me, and I heard that this is the first, like, mainline Metroid game we've got in almost, like, two decades. Yep. It was, like, the early 2000s, the last time. It's been I think it was Metroid Fusion was the, the yeah. last uh, game that came out. So, obviously, like, Metroid fans have been dying to get a title like this. And I think the fact that all I see is people just raving about how good this game is, is uh, very good. I'm happy for the community there. I'm dying to play it too. It looks very, very fun. I can't wait to play it. Uh, personally, I've been playing just more Pokemon Sword, nice. which has been a lot of fun. Uh, playing some Smash as well, and okay. some Breath of the Wild. It's been a lot of Switch stuff. Switch gamer. Dude, I mean, hey, look, I just bought my first Switch, and I'm loving it. Cool. I'm loving it. It's been uh, a lot of fun. I, I waited a long time, but um, 
very much enjoying it. Uh, and definitely because of my jump into Pokemon TCG, I've been jumping into just Pokemon as a whole because I feel like every week here on the show one of the games I'm playing is like oh I'm playing this new Pokemon oh, I'm playing that new Pokemon whatever you know hey, I was doing doing a complete, Sapphire I was a doing Crystal Pokedex Sword including all the DLC guy here so I feel you I'm, I'm loving it it's, it's a blast so lots of fun games uh, let us know what you guys are playing this is going to be a wrap for episode 9 we're hitting double digits, double digits. next week Appreciate you Super guys, as always, for hanging out with us. Um, if you guys ever want to chat, of course, like uh, Yeso said earlier, hit us up on Twitter, at yep. Shimona He and at Castor Yeso. But that does it for us here. Another, yep. uh, another one of the books. Yep. Have a good one, folks. Enjoy the rest of your week, and we'll see you in episode 10. Mm -hmm.